Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing a series on taking these absolutely amazing isolated vocal tracks of some of the most epic pieces in all of pop and rock history. Uh, next up is Jane. Uh, the band is Starship and you know the singer is Mickey Thomas. Now, some of you new guys out there probably may not know who this is, uh, but he is probably one of the greatest uh, high range rock singers of all time. And I'll, I'll probably talk about a few of his songs as we go along. Now, um, I did a version of this song with my student Gabriela Gunchikova, and I will put that in the description. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. Uh, I have a singing course for you guys wanting to learn how to sing or wanting to get better at singing. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You guys can find it right here at kentamplinvocalacademy.com, where I also have a free singing forum with about 25,000 singers, literally 25,000 singers over there all talking about how to get good at singing. So um, I want to dive right in, but I've got to tell you, this gentleman is one of my all-time favorite singers. So for you guys out there, Ken, how did you get all that range? Ken, how did you get you know to be where you are, etc.? I'm dialing you guys in to some of my greatest influences, and I'm telling you right now, this brother is one of my greatest influences for singing. So um, I did a version of "Fooled Around and Fell in Love," I know old Elvin Bishop tune. I'm gonna do that as a separate uh, video tutorial, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now because um, it deserves it. Now, let's just get started, and I wanna show you something right up front. Check this out, here we go. Now, here we go, I'm not sure this is right, I think it was a C, I should've checked this out beforehand, but I didn't. Oh, so it's a B flat, oh, so it's a B. Okay, so J, I mean, bam, just, he's slamming a B, just the first note right out of the gate. Now. Mickey was known for doing that, and you guys probably remember, you know, built this city on rock and roll, and and Sarah, you know, Sarah, Sarah, stars are brewing in your eyes. You know, you guys might remember some of the '80s, you know, early '90s, late '80s stuff um, that they, that Starship did. I challenge you to go and check some of this stuff out because his voice is just phenomenal and he's one of the guys that fell through the cracks like you know you got the Axl Roses and the Sebastian Box all these guys became really famous I personally think he's a much better singer and you could hate through all the hate you want my way it's my personal feel, uh, opinion and feeling so um, anyway and so I'm introducing to you guys to if you wanted to learn how to get to sing great and how this works this is the kind of people these are the kinds of people that we learn from so again it's a it's a B right out of the gate BAM here we go Jay! Okay, now if you get a chance, please, please go into the description and listen to the version I did with Gabriella. Now, I don't remember if this is totally accurate, so I'm sure Gabriella will correct me. We're actually, Gabby and I are getting ready to do a whole bunch of new stuff, so stay tuned for that, because we're working really hard. Uh, you're gonna love the stuff that we got coming up. But um, anyway, um, so I don't even think she ever heard the song before, but I worked up all the vowels, vowels, J! So I want you to do this with me. Now, kind of go into like a falsetto, say, J! Instead of hitting it real hard, J! Right, so I'm actually using a lot of mixed voice and Mickey Thomas is a master at mixed voice, straight up. So if you guys say, what is mixed voice? What's hand voice? What's chance voice? How do I get to mixed voice? This is how you do it, right? This is how you get to this mixed voice. So you can hear him mixing. There's no pressure. He's not pulling up too much weight from the low end and he's not, you know, pinching and squeezing in his throat is real fluid and real velvety. And in some ways, I I think better than Steve Perry. I mean, you know, he, he just, and soulful. Wow. I mean, I can't see enough good about Mickey Thomas. And he's such an unsung hero. I'm going to sing his praises. So let's continue. Here we go. Next line. This is a real old tune, by the way. Yeah, same, right, you hear all that, he's just floating on a cushion of air the whole time, it's so good. His valpa, hi, oh, he might go, yeah, 
He might bring a little bit of mask and a little bit of nasality into the sound, but not that much. So guys, I want you to practice this. For you guys that are really inter interested in learning about mixed voice, start with your head voice. Start with your head voice. Now in my singing course, I cover all this where we build our head voice to a nice bright, you know, ping, a nice bright tone, and we match the tonal qualities of our chest voice, and then we mix in the center, and sometimes we, we reach down into chest, and we're all chest. Sometimes we go into mixed voice, and there's a percentage of mixed voice. Sometimes it's entirely head. He is kind of mixing throughout the whole thing, which is absolutely genius. So now I know Richie Kotzen did um, a version in the winery dogs, I know he did uh, Fool Around and Fell in Love too. He did a killer version of it also. It's a little more throaty, kind of like mine. Mine is a little more throaty in my version that, you know, you can look in my description when I do Fool Around and Fell in Love. Maybe I'll, you know, in fact, I'll put it in the here too so you can hear my version of that. So you hear Gabriella's version of this song and then my version of Fool Around and Fell in Love. It's an old Elvin Bishop song. But anyway, let's continue with this here. Check it out. Just stress. You never can win, go. Yeah, just bam. What is that? Nah. It's an E5, folks. Never can win, go. Right. And so when you hear Robert Plant do it in E5, and notes matter. So, so I hear a lot of people. You know, Robert Plant's got the high, highest voice, or or Sebastian Bach's got. Or listen to Axel Rose. You know, these guys. It's like when you hear Axel, Axel, yeah. You know, whatever, I'm kind of making you know, light of that. Uh, or Sebastian Bach, which can be pretty pitchy. There is no pitch problems here, brothers. This guy is like pitch perfect. And I have seen him six, seven, eight times, something like that, live. And he has been awesome every single time. Spot on perfect every time. And this is how you do it right here. So, <laughs> next one, here we go. He's Now, can you tell how open his talking about Jane? Right, he's so open and so spacious in the way he um, he approaches his vowels, his consonants. He doesn't over sing the consonants, which causes a lot of glottal stops and a lot of compression in the throat. He's just really smooth, man. Whoa, and his vibrato. Whoa, whoa. Listen to his vibrato here, man. So you can go, what? Right, and you can just hear this perfection of vibrato going on. Check it out. All those nights we spent together. Hey, hey. Oh, let me know. Didn't know better. I've got to go. Jay, you're playing a game. Right? Just wow! I can't say wow enough. You go, Ken, you're a little excited. Yes, I am. Because you know what? I'm probably not gonna get a gazillion views on this, and I don't even care. I am here to show you guys the goods on the masters that have gone before us that can get the job done. And you know, I saw I see things like, you know, the weekend when and you know vocalist of the year and, and WAP getting song of the year and all these different things. And I know that as this video goes on, it's gonna date the video, but, and I'm going, really? Really? Come on, really? You know, I, I was in a conversation, Gabriella is staying with me here and in, in, uh, up, up in one of the rooms at the, for our studio because we're getting some um, training stuff done. And we were talking about music and you know, she's really young. Uh, she's gonna be 27 or is 27 now. Uh, and so young to me. <laughs> and um, we were talking about how 
Like there's almost no originality left in music. There's almost no breathing. There's no space. All the instruments sound like samples of other instruments, or at least it's an amp modular where the, the amp is, is, a, is a sample that people are playing to. There's no air in the sound. The drums sound the same. Everyone's using home recordings, and the home recordings are really, really cheesy compared to a lot of the beautiful recordings back in the day. And this is true for a lot of the arts, um, not just you know singing and whatnot, but this is true for movies movies and true for you know painting and, and, and architecture and so forth. But anyway, so what we're hearing is we're hearing original masters that were so good at their craft. So what I'm trying to do is introduce you guys to how great these guys really were so that we could become really great or at least the bastion or the, the vestige of those that want to get really great at this craft. Um, I know that I do believe in my heart that there are enough people out there that hear this and just hear such a difference that's not auto-tuned, that's not processed so much you can't even hardly make out if it's a real vocal or not, that is so unique and individual and it doesn't sound like everybody else, I know I'm on a rant, but that we're listening to, to me, some of the greatest rock vocal performances ever in all of history. And if we can learn from these guys and we can have a remnant, at least of you and me, that want to learn this stuff, then we can score and own the world with what our story telling our story and have a uniqueness that no one else has and a, a bandwidth, a big palette for singing where we can take our voices in lots of places that other people just can't. So it's interesting too, on a lot of the boy bands that are out here right now, I know I'm ranting, guys, but just hang out with me for a second. Um, on a lot of the boy bands that are, have come out over the years or whatever, and, and, and they've got their thing. Back in Motown, there was a lot of light R&B singing, so I'm not putting that down at all. I love the Bee Gees. I love, you know, Otis Redding. I love, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, Marvin Gaye, you know, guys that had a lot of uh, very, very... Um, sensitive kind of sounding vocals with some runs and stuff. Uh, so there is a place for that, of course, but, 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 you're hearing someone that can do that, but can also take on a rock song or sing a ballad like Steve Perry or your favorite singer, Sebastian Bach, whoever it is, with soul and blues and, and roundness and just whatever the guy thinks of, the guy can sing, right? Wouldn't you like to do that for yourself? Wouldn't you like to have that for yourself to just go, man, whatever I think. You know, I, I got really good at guitar. <laughs> I'm going on and on and on. And so what? Tune off if you don't like this, it's okay. But you know, I got really good at guitar. Guitar, guitar is my first instrument. And I started playing guitar when I was about six years old. And all I wanted to be at that time is, you know, Jimmy Page, uh, Al Di Miola way back in the day, Carlos Santana, another guy named John McLaughlin, um, you know, Jan Ackerman. There was some other, you know, kind of uh, Michael Shanker later, um, Carlos Santana, of course, you know. And then, and then, of course, there were, you know, P P Steve Perry or uh, Joe Perry, excuse me, from Aerosmith and whatnot. But I, I grew up kind of more on the on the technical side of stuff, you know, Dixie Dregs. I loved all these different bands. And then later, Paul Gilbert, of course, we all tried to play like Yngwie and, you know, whatever. But, um, and Joe Satriani, you know, Steve I. But what happened was I practiced for about six hours a day, every day, every single day, you know, five, six days a week. And um, I would get up in the morning about 5 a.m. I'd pour myself a mean cup of coffee. Like I'd put my cup directly into the coffee filter and just, we then pour two globs of sugar in there and fill the rest up with cream. And, and I'd, I'd get up at five and I'd practice from, you know, five to, to noon or so, right? Every single day. And I did that for years and I got really good at guitar. Now, why do I say this? Because in order to get really, really good at something, that's the kind of discipline it takes. I mean, everyone will tell you, oh, here's my singing lessons and take my course and you'll get good in a month, 30 days to awesomeness. What a lie from the pit of hell. I mean, if you want to believe that, go ahead, let them take your money and believe it. And by the way, maybe everybody doesn't want to get that good at something and that's okay too. But this is how it's done in order to achieve this level of this kind of success um, in any instrument or, or, or if you're an athlete or whatever your discipline is, right? So anyway, as we're listening to this stuff, this just didn't happen. Now, yes, he's naturally gifted and yes, he has some cool stuff. But if you practice correctly. It's not practice that makes perfect. It's perfect practice that makes perfect. And if you do these steps to get to these phases, I couldn't sing at all. My highest note, guys, I told you about this before. My highest note, hey, hey. When I was going through, you know, trying to learn how to sing, I was, hey, yay. That's all I had. Now, hey. Now I can do, hey. I can do an octave of that just like it's nothing, okay? 
not nothing. I still practice every day, by the way, and I still warm up every day in order to be able to do this stuff. But I know this was a rant and it's just for you guys out there, maybe old school or you really want to really learn what it takes to get great. So I don't think of all of the newcomers and whatnot that are out there right now. I look at this stuff and go, what happened to the art? What happened to the craft? Everybody, you know, I look at, at master class, right? And I'm calling this out and I'm going, you know, some of the greatest guys on there that are showing you how to write a hit song. They're in their computer and everything is taking a sample from here, like a DJ taking another sample. That's not songwriting. That's AI. You could get, a, you could write a program that could probably do that really cool. That is not individual personalized personality in your music. So, and that doesn't tell any story either. So I'm sorry for the long rant guys, but I just had to say it. Uh, I, blah, it's out. And I'm going to go ahead and finish with my brother, Mickey. Here we go. I'm Jane, you're I'm to see. Again. Jane. Great. He's just killing it, man. He's killing it. Jane, you play for fun, but I play for keys. Yes, I do. Jane, Jane, Jane. That's a game on me, yeah. Jane, Jane. So play the scene. You hear that instead? Instead of being strained, it's C, and he's going, instead of going C really hard on the vowel, it's like the number eight, C, right, C, E, C, C, right, he's got so much space in the throat, and that is precisely what I teach you guys at Ken Temple Vocal Academy, how to get to these places. All right, now I want to go ahead and I want to show you something um, also that you might find interesting. Okay, I'm going to go to the top and I want to show you that back in the day, I want to include the instrumental track. They didn't use a lot of effects, which is cool. And so later we learned, well, we could do some things to embellish this and make this a little bigger. So what I want to do is I'm going to add the track for a second and we're just going to hear it with the track. So check it out. And here is his precision on his uh, intonation, okay? Now, I'm gonna play it again, and I'm gonna put in some effects. So I'm gonna start with my affected version. All I did was add a little bit of delay, a little bit of doubler, a tiny bit of harmonizer, not much, uh, a room reverb, a medium-sized reverb and a long reverb. That's all. <laughs> anyway, these are cool. Like These, these come with, uh, you could get these hot-rodded with, um, for SPX 1000. So inside the, these these older Yamaha 2 r 96s, 96Ks, uh, you could they you, they at one point let you go ahead and hot rod them with different outboard gear. And I like the SPX 1000s because it, it, it has to be Yamaha related. So I went ahead and put four of them. So it's got four motor drives. So I've got two of them. So I've got eight. Um, so I can use up to eight SPX 1000s. So I'm using four of them right now. But anyway. Um, some people ask me about my gear and what I use and I love, you know, I love 40Ls and, you know, early uh, lexicon stuff right now. I just don't have it here. I used to have all that stuff. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's say <laughs> after that talking, you got to get, get back a, a reference. Here's the original with no facts. One more time. Now there's a beautiful simplicity to that, so I'm not, I don't want to take away from that, but you could make it a little fatter. Check it out. Now in fairness, let's take the music out. Let's hear it isolated without the effects. Here we go. Time for love and a time for letting it be, baby. 
Here's with effects. Check it out. Now listen to it with a track with the effect. Here's without. Anyway, gang, I'm, I'm really trying to go the extra mile, show you about recording, show you about the voice, show you about the background of the band, a songwriting, melodic values, just everything I can to help you guys grow. And for you guys out there too, um, just so you know, I know it sounds crazy, yes, I do sell a singing course, yes, I do sell singing lessons, but even if you guys have been watching Rick Beato and any of these other guys, you know, we don't get paid for these videos. When I use, um, tracks and I've got you know cover songs and I don't own the music all of the money for this video process all of the views all of the YouTube videos I have that are cover songs it goes to the publisher it goes to the record label it goes to the songwriter we get nothing if we get something it's you know if I do a tutorial that there's no I don't use anybody else's music then I get a little something so I really truly altruistically am trying to share information with you guys to help you grow and to kind of you know re-spark uh, some of what we've lost in music and some of what we've lost in the craft and the art of great singing so if you like this please like and subscribe again gang and definitely check out my next video